in the past, you didn't have to. You didn't have to worry about giving your employees paid time off. However, many states now require that employers give employees paid sick time. So in the old days, you didn't have to do it. If you're in one of those states that requires that you offer and pay your employees sick time, you do have to do it. If you're not in one of those states, you don't have to do it. So when it comes to tracking employee time off, what options do businesses have? So I think the biggest option is what system do they use to do it? Are they going to do it in a manual system? Are they going to do it in a separate system? So one of the biggest options that they have is how to keep track of everything. The second biggest option, I think, is how many buckets or categories of time off are you going to have? Are you going to have a bucket for vacation and then a separate bucket for sick time and a separate bucket for personal time and then keep track of all those separate buckets? Or are you going to just have one bucket and call it paid time off? And if an employee wants to take time off for whatever reason, they just use paid time off. So in the old days, again, people used to have separate buckets for vacation, sick and personal. And then in the last five or 10 years, everyone pushed it all together into one category called paid time off. Now with the new sick time rules that the states have that have different ways of earning the sick time and different amount of hours of sick time that you have to can use in a year and different carryover rules if you don't use the sick time. Companies have again gone away from just that single bucket called PTO and have at least two buckets one for sick time and one for paid time off. So as an employer, how do you establish the rules for employee paid time off and communicate them to your employees? So the best way is through your employee handbook. So the employee handbook establishes all the rules for your company. And in the handbook, you should have a section for holidays, sick time, vacation, all time off rules. It's all done in the handbook and you should always, every year the handbook should be updated based upon the changes in the laws and the requirements. And uh, that's the vehicle. It's all done in the employee handbook. What mistakes do employers make and how do employers get into trouble regarding employee paid time off? So you never have to worry about that. Employers never get into trouble. <laughs> They get into trouble all the time over this stuff. And one of the things I see the most often is even though they have a handbook and they have these rules, they make exceptions. They'll make an exception for an employee. And then what happens is that creates a precedent. And that overrules the written word in your handbook. So what you're actually doing is more valid and more important than the written word. So you, the bottom line is you can't make exceptions for people. You can if you can classify them based upon seniority or you could classify them based upon what their job title is. Like you can have different rules for your salespeople than you have for your operations people, or you can have different time off rules for your senior people that were with you for 10 years and the new people get different rules. But otherwise, you have to treat everybody the same. Otherwise, you get into trouble if you start making exceptions because one employee speaks to another employee and they all find out what happened and you have to be even handed in the way that you apply the rules. So I think that's one of the biggest areas where employers get into trouble. There is another one, there is another one that comes up a lot. And 
it has to do with the new paid sick time. Many states now have implemented a paid sick time requirement. And a lot of employers have no idea about this. And they're not doing it. And they get into trouble because they're not doing it. Other employers say, oh, it's all part of my PTO. It's all in there. It's all included. But the rules are very specific in the states. The, the rules are specific of how employees earn this sick time. The rules are specific about how quickly an employee can get paid that sick time. So, for example, your paid time off rules might say your employee has to be with the company for six months before they could start to use their PTO time. However, the state might say the sick time rule starts right away. So the minute they earn enough hours to take a sick day, they get a sick day. So my advice to you, if you're in a state that has paid sick time requirements, is to create a separate bucket for the sick time with the specific sick time rules in your state, rules with regard to how they earn the time, when they can use the time, what happens if they don't use the time, what are the carryover rules? But you know, from a perspective of an employer, you're not just gonna add this on and make it an additional expense. What you do is carve it out of your PTO bucket. So together it's the same, so to speak. For example, your PTO bucket plus your new sick time bucket equals what you used to give anyway in the PTO bucket. But you just have two different categories and you apply the specific rules of the state that you're in to the sick time bucket. The biggest objection that I get from employers is that we're not going to do separate sick time. We're not going to follow that. But you know what, if you're already giving vacation time, and let's say your arrangement with the employee is you get a week of vacation time, and now the sick time equals a week, right? Because that's the rules in the state, then take away the vacation time and just do sick time and just call it something different and apply the rules a little different, but it's the same week off and that's it. If you're a company that doesn't give your employees any paid time off, then the sick time is a burden. Then the sick time is extra cost. But most companies give employees paid time off anyway. So the best advice I have is just to carve out the sick time from your existing deal or arrangement that you have with your employees so it doesn't cost you any extra money as the business owner. Okay, so how do employers know what their rules are? Like, where do they go to find that? You should be able to get that information from your payroll provider. However, if you're using one of these giant payroll providers like ADP or Paychex, they're not going to know the rules in your state. They'll know the federal rules, but they're not going to know the state rules. So if you're using a local payroll company, chances are they're going to know the rules in your state. So the, the first thing I would do is if you're using a local payroll company, go to your payroll company and ask them. And if you have a really good local payroll company, they should have come to you and told you that these are the rules. How do you want to handle it? So that's what we do. And hopefully you're getting that same level of service.